Hello, all you awesomely powerful Scorpios. This is Maxine Taylor, and I have your July astrological forecast right here. Um, oh, can't wait to share it with you. First of all, let's start with Mars. Mars is in Aries. It's the, in the sign it rules. Look out. Here you come. There, there you are in your sixth house of work health and service. You are throwing yourself into your daily activities, maybe working out more. Uh, I don't know. Everything I've said is available to you because the sixth house is work, health, and service. And so your job comes first to you. Um, and you throw yourself into it with a passion. Um, your health as well. You may find yourself crossing every T and dotting every I in order to be as healthy as you possibly can. And of course, Mars is one of your rulers. I love it. I love it. Now let's look at Venus, the pink planet, in your eighth house, which is the house that you, Scorpio, rule in the natural zodiac. The eighth house is the house of mutually financial. You, me, bleh. Mercury still retrograde, so my lips are not working as a team or with my mind. The eighth house deals with mutually beneficial financial projects. Okay, say that fast three times. Um, anything in the eighth house is undergoing a transformation because you are the sign of transformation and power and magic. Love it. And so your love nature is undergoing a change. You may be cooperating with other people to help them create more income. This is beautiful. And what you love and how you love, maybe even who you love is what you're looking at here. You're examining your beliefs about love. And you will work through anything in that eighth house. That's the power of the eighth house. And it speaks very highly of you. Now let's look at Mercury, the blue planet. It's still retrograde in your ninth house of the higher mind. You're seeing a much bigger picture. Uh, sometimes if when we get involved with our eighth house, we get really caught up in uh, the smaller view, the microscopic, the microcosmic view. You're seeing the big picture, but Mercury's still retrograde till the 12th, so you may not get the clarity you want until after that. Be patient with yourself. You're ready to get on a plane and go somewhere. You're ready to spread your wings and soar. That's the ninth house. Now, after Mercury goes direct, it's going to be in the shadow of the retrograde until the 26th. Venus is in the shadow of the retrograde. It has gone direct, and it will be there till the 28th of the month. Mars is going to enter the shadow of its retrograde on July 25th in preparation for its own retrograde motion in a couple of months. So uh, you can start new projects uh, during the shadow of the retrograde, but it feels so much like the retrograde itself that it may not work out. If you find that it's not working out, wait until after it comes out of the shadow and things will move along much more smoothly. If they even move along, you might have changed your mind about the project by then. You are seeing a much bigger picture and this is really great particularly since the sun, the yellow planet, the center of our life is sitting there in the ninth house. Your desire to connect with people from other lands to understand their belief systems um, is beautiful. You're looking at life philosophically. This is what will help you. And then on the 22nd, the sun goes into your 10th house of leadership and career, and you are the leader and your career becomes the center of your life. And my suggestion is that you speak to those in authority who can help you move upward in your career. 
Okay, we have a full moon uh, between the 4th and the 5th of July, depending on where you live on this planet. Uh, it's a lunar eclipse as well. So it's incredibly powerful and will be at its peak three to four months from now. If you're not uh, aware of how powerful this eclipse will be, just wait for three to four months and you will see because the third house is communication, correspondence, transportation, our mouth and our minds. It helps you communicate. It helps you teach. It helps you get your point across. And it is an eclipse, which means it's going to have a strong, a strong effect uh, till the next pair of eclipses come along uh, in 2021. Oh no, excuse me, so sorry. At the end of 2020, I'm thinking way ahead. Uh, we have an eclipse in November and another in December. Okay, now, two weeks later, we're in the dark of the moon, no energy. On July 20th, we have a new moon. It's not an eclipse, that's okay. The energy starts moving forward. And it's back in your, in your ninth house. Mercury has already gone direct. You're seeing the big picture. You're expressing the big picture. You may be traveling. I don't know what type of uh, long distance travel restrictions uh, the airlines and government might impose, but you keep your passport current because you're ready to hit the ground running or more specifically, hit the air soaring. So, that is your glorious forecast for July. I hope you love it. Um, and if you'd like your own personal forecast from me, just go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com. Order the reading or readings that you would like, and I will be back in touch. So, till we meet again, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.